Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another glorious company and Heroes 3 casting yard. And in this episode, we're going to be going up against the rank 107 in the world Wehrmacht yeah. And every day this man gets before a poster of the Führer because he does not play the Untermensch, the allies whatsoever. He has zero games as allies, only as the glorious Axis, yeah. And his highest rank ever with the Axis uh, Wehrmacht was rank 39, so this boy knows how to play. So what is he going to do in the early game? He's going to go the cheesy strat of Falschirm Pioneer Spam, yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, all that shit. So what is he going to do? He's going to drop it off the fuel point, deny me the plus 10 fuel in the early game, and unfortunately putting me on the back foot, because what he's going to do is put very smart uh, but annoying barbed wire down, and it basically denies me any use of this green cover, and he's going to put barbed wire here, so all I can ever do is basically look at this point from afar and just suffer in the early game. So what are we going to do to counter it? Three pathfinders, oh, sorry, three scouts, and then into pathfinder tech up. Boom, there we go. So that saves us a lot of manpower in the early game and allows us to go tier 2 and allows us to get a uh, M191930 cal machine gun. So that's what we're doing right now. And uh, I see a lot of high level players between rank 60 to 100 use this cheesy, fal cheesy Falsham Pioneer strat. They don't have anything creative to try. All they're going to do is just spam Falsham Pioneers and spam mines and then either go broom bar or into warble wind or my favorite fortification spam which is going to be coming up in the mid to late game so get ready for that exciting matchup people this man has loved the fatherland since he was a boy every day he gets up and reads a copy of mine Comp. he is steiner's counter attack and all he's going to do is cheese. Second squad of Falsham Pioneers rolling onto the field. Let's go ahead and select a player. Only that shit. And I attempt to get the decap on the plus 10 fuel. But that is going to fail dramatically. We're not going to win that fight. So I'm going to back off. What is the goal right now? We're not going to win these fights. But we need to save our manpower. So we can eventually win those fights. Because we're going to go ahead and rush for Airborne. So, Pathfinders have taken a huge nerf. Uh, they used to be amazing back in the day. But they do suffer now. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to bleed these engineers. Should I have gotten away and put a little bit more range? Yes. But I want to go ahead and get those early decaps on his manpower point, denying him the fuel. Because he has a current uh, total amount of plus 33 fuel. And we don't want that. The more fuel he gets, the faster he can either rush a broom bar or a warble win. And we just don't want to deal with that. So, second MG onto the field. We are going to pay... Uh, oh my, Reginald, an engineer tax. Because here at Relic Studios, we hate allies, especially USF. So, because um, we hate them so much, they don't get engineers in the early game. We give them shitty scouts. Oh yes, oh my. So my opponent, because he has Falsham Pioneers, what he's going to do is spam mines everywhere. As soon as he gets munis, he's going to spam mines. He's probably going to go grenade launcher, which he does. And that has been a problem since the fucking beginning of the game. Grenade launchers are more devastating in the team games. But it's still just as cheesy as ever. Relic doesn't want to balance their shit. So, here we are. Uh, because this MG's right here, and we have an MG on the left side of the map, I feel comfortable in pushing this uh, fuel point. Uh, because I'm, you know, well supported. I feel confident. He's on the right side of the map. What is he trying to do? He's trying to shoot my MG from the building. Luckily, it's out of range. But as soon as he rotates and gets into this uh, little side uh, house right here, he can win this fight and devastate me. Because these Falsham Pioneers do amazing at range. On the left side of the map, unfortunately, I'm outflanked. We're not going to win that fight. And as soon as he touches the fuel, I'm going to have to back off. So, that's what we're doing. He is in the building again. So, we're going to back this MG off. Because look at that bleed. Instantly bleeding the MG. We're almost at... Nah, we're about at three-fourths health right now. Health, uh, after that one damage burst. So, I see this setting up right now, too. He is trying to decap my uh, manpower point, which is going to cut everything off. And dropping me back to plus 23 fuel. I'm sorry, it's going to drop me down to 13 fuel. So, he's going to, again, take his units that were on the hill and, you know, push me into base. And this is a very smart move. He gets a bit too greedy. My base MG does open up. It's well within range. It's well within the circle before somebody says something. And we're going to take the scouts from the right side of the map, get behind the green cover, and bleed him at range. So, what are we worried about right now? He has rushed the tech up for um, Tier 1, Vermont, And that means that these guys heal out of cover, fire faster, and it just put more damage onto you. His engineers, as well, are going to fire faster, and they are going to most likely rush flamethrowers to put a lot of um, manpower bleed onto my units, and he is going to do that. I let him know that I have minesweepers, so in case he wants to be a cheesy motherfucker and spam mines everywhere, I'm going to go ahead and sweep them every step of the way. We're going to go ahead and try to push out of base right now. MG has to stay at range, but if he gets behind the screen cover and shoots me, I will lose the fight every time, and this is the struggle as allies. 
So we do win that fight on the right side of the map. We have our first airborne squad into the field. What is the next thing that we're worried about? If he goes 2-2-1, two, two, I could lose the game at any point in time. Because the 2-2-1 two, two, is so powerful at bleeding infantry squads, it is absolutely devastating. So we're being cautious. With the Pathfinders, because they're a little bit cheaper on the manpower, we can be risky and constantly pushing. If I had went Rifleman, he would have put mines every square inch of the map and just destroyed me. Uh, because the Riflemen only do good at close range. These scouts can bleed him at longer ranges, so it allows me to be a bit more passive. Airborne are pushing in. Again, being aggressive, because these guys can do a lot of damage at close range, and they can hold their own. They are expensive, though, at 320, so what we're going to do in the late game is go Infantry Company, Infantry Support, and we're going to use the Reduced Cost ability. Why are we not going to focus on armor? Because my opponent has gone uh, Luftwaffe Doctrine. Luftwaffe, yeah. He can spam anti-tank loiter planes, he can make the cheap AT guns, and on top of that he gets a plus 25% reduction in manpower cost. So, we have to fight this infantry v infantry. We can use armored vehicles, but our main focus is going to be winning these infantry engagements. Right, so the map, the MG is going to die because of this uh, grenade launcher right here. Watch that. Boom! Instantly gone, and the grenade launcher is so, so balanced. Yes, that unit was low, but that was a multiple damage burst of the grenade launcher and the cover. On the left side of the map, we're going to leave the MG here, overlooking the uh, 30 cal. I don't want him to pick that up whatsoever. Look at that. Wow, where is that going? And that's a miss, okay. Engineers are going to hug him. We did get the suppression. I feel comfortable in this engagement. Pathfinders are going to bleed him on the left side of the map. We call in a panic airborne squad because we don't want him to have the MG whatsoever. We're going to back these pathfinders uh, off and hug the fuel point because we need that plus 10 fuel going. We still have the cutoff going, so we're denying my opponent precious fuel income. MG is going to get bled heavily again, so we have to back that off with the second squad of airborns to feel confident in pushing in. So we're going to take these uh, airborns and just continue the fight. I'm not going to stop him on the decap over here because all of his units ran back to base, so he can walk out any time. Plus, with the healing out of combat ability, he doesn't have to really tech medics at all. So let's just go ahead and see if he's done that. Uh, I, I, I can't say... No, no, he is not tech medics whatsoever, so he's just, he's using this ability to cheese his way into the game. Meanwhile, I'm over here paying the uh, fucking medical tax. So, 30 cal sets up, the cover training kicks in. I was hoping to drop some models, unfortunately we don't. We do get some heavy bleeds into the MG, but I have to back off now because this is the critical point in the engagement. And look at that range on that Joker, and he almost wipes me on retreat. This could have been very deadly. Airborne are going to rotate the right side of the map because with that flak emplacement, that means I need to back off. If you're asking yourself, why did I not go... Tier 3, get a Greyhound. Because of this commander, I don't have to go Tier 3. If I went, uh, so I don't have to get AT guns through the Tier 3. I can just go ahead and para drop it in. Because of that flat uh, 38 that I just saw, this little guy right here, that can wipe the Greyhound if they're both focused together in about 5 seconds. 3 to 5 seconds if they both volley onto the Greyhound. That's even with the armored skirts upgrade. So that's why we're focusing on the infantry. I don't want a Greyhound that I'm going to be repairing 99.9% .9 during this match. I would rather have dedicated uh, anti-infantry units and uh, eventually go airborne bazookas instead of just constantly struggling with the lackluster Greyhound. And the Greyhound is very much so lackluster. So rolling back to mine. Uh, view. We're going to go ahead and try to decap the fuel. We're not going to win this engagement. We just want to decap. Airborns are going to open up in the engineers because they can bleed me heavily. We're going to roll back the scouts in. Uh, I'm actually going to fall back those airborns. My bad, I misspoke. Here comes the strafing room. We're going to pack everything up and just run because we don't need any unnecessary damage. We do get the decap, moving the scouts back. So we did what we wanted to do, which was decap him. He gave me an indication that both flak uh, 38s are on the right side of the map. So that allows me to be a bit more confident in my pushes on the left side of the map when we get there. But we have to make it fast, because the Flak 38s are apparently the fastest fucking thing in the world, and look at that movement speed. They are rolling. They are rolling and going. MG-19, uh, sorry, Machine Gun 1919 flanked or 30 cal. Ugh, I cannot keep up with these fucking names in this game. So we're backing off right now. Uh, we, we've got to heal. We cannot lose any models because we're playing the manpower gain, uh, game right now. He has buffed the Flak 38s, giving them more damage and fire rate, if I got that correctly. It gives them access to the button crew ability. Yep. Uh, harder to hit. So these guys are even more harder to kill. I mean, look at this. Does this look like cover to anybody, but they're harder to hit? I mean, these things act like they're a fucking anti-tank gun. I'm sorry, but your units are out of cover, sir, but they're definitely hard to kill. 
So what is he doing right now? Putting those cheesy mines, but we don't know that yet. So back to my screen. We are going to take our engineers and mine sweep as soon as possible. We're going to take this extra 30 cal, cover the right BP, because he's going to start trying to bleed us out of this game. We don't want that. Left side of the map. Scouts are going to go ahead and get behind green cover, engaging him at range. We're getting some good uh, bleed into him, but because he's behind the yellow cover, and these units are buffed on the veteran C2, this is going to be a long-ass engagement. But he's doing what he needs to do, decapping me, preventing me from getting uh, any munis, which is going to delay my airborne bazooka tech up. So what are we doing right now? We're going to go ahead and rush tier 4. With the double flak 38s, I am at a point in the game where I don't want to not have any sort of armor onto the field. Um, I know I said we're going to go heavy infantry, but if he goes a flak 38, he can bleed me at range, and there's the mines. I've popped the minesweepers so we get a good indication of what's going on. We're going to put the minesweepers behind cover, and we're going to continue to be aggressive. I have enough of a blob going that I want to push him off the middle of the map. Captain's going to go ahead and be the bait. I want him to just shoot at the captain and focus on that. Airborne's are getting behind the green cover, and with that, I can focus these annoying little fortune pioneer squads, little motherfucker, and uh, hit them as hard as we can. The green cover is going to go ahead and buy us time on this engagement. Second flag 38 opening up, and it's just bleeding these airborne's heavily. We are going to retreat them momentarily. Engineers, again, staying here, keeping these mines from detonating uh, on my units on retreat, and look at that retreat path. If those minesweepers had fallen back, that would have been a dead squad, most likely. Airborns are going to go ahead and try to decap, but I have to roll them off the point. I'm trying to get some flanking shots going. We are dodging the planes as they're coming in. He has spammed these planes nonstop trying to harass me. So, boom, there's a retreat going. We're preventing any unnecessary uh, bleeds going or wipes from these strafing runs. And as always, retreating reduces the incoming damage from units, I think, by 25%, Welcome. if I got that correctly. So it pays command. to retreat your units and be on the side of caution. So, with the tech up complete, I attempted to halt the auto reinforce. Unfortunately, I didn't click it on this building, which always gives me a fucking good laugh because both of these buildings can reinforce. So, I was attempting to rush Sherman's, but this will play into our favor uh, eventually. We're just going to go ahead and heal these units. I'm already paying the cost. I, I just don't want to deal with it. I'm like, fuck it. We'll leave this on for now. Enemy activity Captain coming out of base. Point. We're going to move to the right side of the map because he is sitting uh, for most of this match inside this building. He's going to leave a dedicated unit in this house for 99.99999999% of the fucking match. So, that that's this game right now. It's like, whatever, man. Have your way. Take the fucking house. I don't even want your stupid house. I don't even want to look at it. So, right to the map. The captain can't win this engagement against the engineers as long as we stay at range and we are going to open up. He sees the captain. He's going to back off. He doesn't want any unnecessary manpower bleeds because he's rushing a flak verbal one. I thought he was going to rush Broombar, but because he won't rush Flak Verbal Wind, this captain is going to die. It doesn't matter how much health he, this captain is at, because of this uh, neutral to negative cover, the captain will die, unfortunately. So we're about to see that happen soon. There's my Sherman coming onto the field. I'm like, okay, we need to have something to counter to Broombar. This is a risky gamble, because if he went Broombar, the Sherman can bounce off the Broombar, and that would have required me to rush into Hellcat next. After a second Sherman, we will go advanced logistics. Uh, I'm just kind of pussyfooting this match right now. I'm seeing what he's trying to go for for his ultimate build. We're pretty much dead even on the population cap. His is a little bit better than mine with the double flak verbal ones. I'm sorry, double flak 38s. 30s? Fuck me, I can't speak right now. And we're taking the double airborne, so we're going to go ahead and put pressure onto these guys. Now, the airborne can only fire uh, these M1919s when halted, I believe. So. Let's see, all ranges, cannot, yep, cannot fire in the move. So every time we are rolling and bowling with these guys, we have to halt and open up with a burst. They cannot fire in the move. It can be a little bit frustrating. We're taking the Sherman, and I'm like, okay, don't push the right side of the map. There's nothing over there covering it. We're going to go ahead on the left side of the map. He sees me pushing in with my army. He might get a little bit cocky, and I know for a fact he's going to rotate that Black Verbal one. And boom, there's a Black Verbal one. Not where I expected it, but it gives me indication, hey... His uh, guns are probably not supported. My opponent is going to go okay, martyr next. Martyrs are attack. very, very good attack. and very, very deadly against Shermans. So smart move from my opponent, but his cheese will commence shortly. Now, Flak 30, unsupported, very low. He's going to go ahead and pop the uh, blinding ability uh, and buttoning me. I'm going to go ahead and open up. I get a huge damage roll into that guy. Here comes another strafing plane from my opponent. I was debating on satcheling. I'm like, fuck it, I want to save my uh, munitions. So we're going to go ahead and kill it with the Sherman. I dodge that straight perfectly. Engineers are sweeping because in case my Sherman needs to roll out or put more pressure onto the map, I want to make sure I can do that. Unfortunately, I misclick and I open up on the uh, Flak 38. I should have just finished this gun right away because one less Flak 30 onto the field means we're going to have a lot less pressure onto our infantry, a lot less bleeds, and it just opens up more opportunities for us. 
Sherman is coming out, and uh, because we killed the Flak 30, we can't roll out. We know where the mine's at. I know he's trying to bait me over here. I'm like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable with that engagement. We're going to go ahead and take the Pathfinders and decap his munis. Airborns are going to attempt to open up, but because of that blob, he is going to win the fight, and the Pathfinders will retreat as well, because he could just instantly wipe me if I'm not careful. The Flak... Uh, sorry, the Warble Wind can roll around and the Flak 30 setting up is aiming to hit my units on retreat. We're going to use this wall and Sight Blocker as cover, preventing the Sherman from taking any unnecessary damage and allowing us to put uh, rounds onto those units. Second Sherman is uh, building now. It will pop eventually. Captain did die. I think I missed that on the uh, recording. But that was instantly wiped. So we're setting up the M1919. We're going to keep the fuel control and the overlook on the hill. We don't want him pushing in. Sherman is going to be a bit greedy. And there's the Martyr. And boom, huge shot into the Sherman. That's an instant uh, three-fourths health with that one shot. Second shot brings me to half health. He was attempting to button me and slow me down. It fails. Uh, he does drop me to half health, so we're going to have to take our engineers because we paid the engineer tax and where are these little bastards at. And we will rotate them as soon as we can and get the Sherman refitted and refueled. Flak 30, I'm sorry, Warble Winds opening up on me, Flak Panzer. With the Flak 30, my opponent is putting down. Da, 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 what the fuck is that shit? Ah, Flak 36 anti tank emplacement. This meta has been going on, on since up. two on, on, motherfucking years of this game, and it's never gonna stop. Also, on the right side of the map, he has put an anti air Flak 38 emplacement. If I'm saying Flak a lot, it's, a, it's because the Luftwaffe Doctrine loves its fucking Flak cannons. Holy shit, I, I can't. I can't with this game anymore. I can't with this game anymore. This game is hitting, uh, we're past equilibrium. We're hitting the fucking point of no return. If this cheesy fucking meta continues, you're gonna lose a lot of players right now. I mean, we, we are encouraging SimCity. I thought in Company of Heroes 2, we all agreed SimCity was for trash players. We all said, hey, if you make six mortars, you're garbage at the game. Because that means you can't fucking micro. And look, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's been back. In fact, it never left. Every time they do a balance patch, it just fucking sits here and taunts me. It's frustrating. Does this look fun to you people? I I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Does it look fun to just fight fucking SimCity? Because SimCity, that means I can't push the middle of the map because this Flak 30 will suppress me. Left side of the map, that means if I don't put pressure because the Martyrs hold down. Oh, look, there's a second. Oh, no, third, third. I'm sorry. Second Flak 36. Third fucking emplacement and over here in boogaloo land these motherfuckers never left the building he's leaving them in there because it's a valid strategy meanwhile over in allied land every one of my units are doing something every one of my units are doing something except this guy oh, no no he's doing something he's covered the fucking vp holy moly so here's the flak 30 rotating all you had to do is leave it here i don't even know why he's being aggressive with it but that's okay. I did tech into passive healing with the Pathfinders, so we're going to make that work. We're going to open up on the Flak 30. Airborne uh, paratroopers are at fucking max range, and these guys are opening up. I put a rifle nade on that. Juicy rifle nade. We might get the wipe on it. I'm getting a little bit excited. And we're going to go and focus them down as much as we can. With that wipe, we will take the Shermans and knock this crew out. Boom. And, yep, we're good. I'm sorry. I'm going to delete the gun as soon as I can. I did put a smoke down to stop the Flak uh, Warble one from just uh, tearing me up. We're going to back off the Pathfinders. We're going to move in the Shermans and go ahead and yeet and delete this shit. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and throw a satchel. I said, fuck it. Well, we can't get it because of the smoke and the Martyr's going to open on us. Uh, open up on us. And this guy's about to open up on us, so we're going to go ahead and throw a satchel. But that's huge. Second Flak 30 knocked out in the game. So, we're, uh, you know, kind of reducing the amount of cheese building here. We're already at fondue levels. We're trying to stop at mozzarella. This shit is getting bad. We're going to have to keep our units blobbed together. I'm gonna blob my units. At this point, I'm like, fuck it. There's no point in even attempting to, like, be tactical about this game. Because if we don't keep them blobbed, a little bit blobbed together, all he's gonna do is just focus on one. So I want him to be a little bit confused. You know, he's gonna focus... Ah, uh, I don't know, man. I, I just... It, it is... This match was 47 minutes long. It's easier to do statistical math and uh, learn psychology than it is to play this game as allies. That That's my... That's my, uh... Oh... Uh, Controversial point of the day right here. It, it, it's easier to play fucking Axis in this game It's just frustrating. I'm stuttering. I just lost my train of thought. So third squad of bazookas onto the field because We're gonna be relying on our infantry. We're gonna go ahead and go advance logistics and for start before somebody says you see This is the problem with allies right here Let's hit that pass button. This is the problem with allies. All you guys want to do is get your blobs going Okay, cool. Before we say anything, Axis mains, 
because I went into advanced logistics, you guys have the same fucking thing over here in uh, Boogaloo land, which is 25% reduction in manpower. But your boy decided to go flak 36 anti-tank gun emplacement spam. That's what you get. You had, the, you had every opportunity to counter me, but we want to play fucking cheese. Let's do it. But you see, that's the problem. If he if he has to choose between spamming and placements, is this fun? Can, can somebody find the fun button? I can't find the fun button anywhere. But here we go. We're going to go ahead and take our blob rolling. We need every amount of blob going because when we fight this guy, we're going to need all hands on deck. We need everything grouped together. And he's going to sit in that building and harass me. So this is our first attempt on taking the hill, taking the gun. We're trying to push him off. Uh, we're getting bled heavily, but that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and try to, you know, rotate this guy out. He's too low. Double Sherman's coming onto the field. We're gonna hit that building. Here comes the strafing worm. We're gonna go ahead and take our blob and dodging it. Second squad of air- or sorry, fourth squad of airborne's onto the field. We're gonna go ahead and immediately tech them in with bazookas. We need to knock out this fucking gun emplacement. We're keeping these guys max range as much as we can. Trying to not get suppressed. There's the flak, uh, Warble went opening up on me with the flak 38 with the martyr in combo. But we're trying to knock out this gun as much as we can. We're gonna go and attempt to get a dirty satchel onto this guy. This might cost me the unit, but I would rather this gun die than deal with it for another 10 seconds. So there's the lovely satchel coming onto the field. Unfortunately, this airborne will die and gives my opponent a bazooka, which means that he can pin my Shermans. My Sherman is trying to pick which target he wants. Because this gun died, he's gonna immediately try to attack the martyr. Unfortunately, we did decrew the gun, but we did not get the ultimate kill, uh, was what we were going for. Now, the double martyrs will bully me. We need to back up the Shermans right away. If we're not careful, we will lose the game. Airborns can put uh, flanking shots into the martyr and get some, uh, you know, very minuscule amount of health bleed going. But yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and wipe these engineers. He gets a bit overconfident with them, drops this uh, engineer, removes one of his repair squads, which is, you know, pretty awesome, but his whole army is nothing but repairs, so it doesn't really do much. Airborns are going to get behind the green cover, and this is going to allow us to bleed, bleed, uh, bleed him at range. Uh, I do miss the first volley. Second volley does make contact. I feel confident with the Sherman. I'm going to go ahead and to attack, and we're going to move the airborns in. Boom, getting that last uh, strike onto the martyr, giving us the necessary vision. And we're going to go ahead, and, uh, because we've killed that Martyr, we feel a bit more confident. We can move these Airborns in and try to get some Dirty Bleeds onto the Martyr and Flak 30, uh, I'm sorry, Flak Panzer Verbal win. Fuck me. So many Flaks in this game. I see his little uh, crab shoots in, so what does that mean? He's uh, spotting me in the middle of the map, is what he's doing. It's got we periscopes on, so what, he's Arch using this to constantly get vision right here. If he had rotated a little bit more, there it is. And on top of that, he's going to put mines down. So, boom, look at all that vision my opponent gets. He's using that to his advantage because, again, the plus 10 range, sight main gun, means that he can hit me from about right here if I uh, walk into his gun. So, we got to be cautious again. Getting the blob back onto the field. Next up, we are going to tech survival training because these infantry squads are very squishy, but because of the plus 10 health and reduced ability recharges, that's why we're going to go ahead and tech into it. We, we want these guys to be as annoying as possible, so when he does bleed us or try to push us off the field or go for a wipe, it takes a lot of effort. After we get this upgrade, we're going to go ahead for a Hellcat or an additional Sherman. I don't know yet. We have called in a anti-tank gun. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the anti-tank gun to attack the uh, flak emplacement. I realize that, hey, even with the double Shermans and bazookas in tandem, it's not enough. We need an anti-tank gun. And if he goes MG spam, which he is going to go, he's going to go three MG42s, that's going to hurt us. We need to start deleting these emplacements as soon as possible. If we don't get on top of it, he will haul us down and delete us from the game. So let's go ahead and check that map again, people. How many emplacement? Let's do a Dora the Explorer. Do, 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 Dora. One, two, three emplacements. And he's going to go for four emplacements. He's going to put one right here eventually. But yeah, this man is a co-champion. This is what Company of Heroes is all about. If you're wondering why I didn't satchel the house, I didn't want to waste the satchels. I would rather have satchels working on this guy right here boom opens up into the sherman immediately damage uh what does this mean every one of my units are going to go ahead and retreat off the field we're not going to take any damage these planes can attack vehicles and they can attack allied infantry this strafing run is deadly we're going to pull everything back i am going to reposition the sherman because we are a pinky toe in that means that those planes will target the sherman if you're about right here out of the circle your vehicles can get targeted we're going to take our at gun and push it back in eventually boom there it is but i'm i'm like okay we need to swing it around the town because if we go into the circle because these planes are providing active recon let me show you real quick the advantage is ours. 
Well, I guess they're not. My bad. I could be lying here. I thought they uh, provided a little bit of recon right here. I'm lying. My bad. So these planes are har still harassing the area. We're going to go ahead and stay in our base, rotate the AT gun, get some heals, and then put it on the right side of the map. Left side of the map. I'm like, okay, we're not putting enough pressure on. What is he doing? He has MG42 with the Fleck 36 the in tandem. And the Fleck 36 in the mid, and the Fleck 38. So many Flecks, not enough time. Uh, and then this, it just, fuck. I'm not trying to sound annoyed right now, but this is the game right here. 24 minutes in. Does it look fun? Does it look fun? Does anybody think, oh man, I can't wait to play Company of Heroes 3. This is the best thing ever. Whoa, I love my flak emplacements. Oh, viable. This shit's viable, again, between the ranks 60 and 100. So if you are Axis main and you're going, man, I'm bad at the game, just fucking make flax. There's the double martyrs in combo. Even with all these emplacements, by the way, his army can still uh, have more built to it. So he's going to go double martyrs, double flak uh, verbal ones. And he's just going to hug the buildings right now. Uh, we're trying to get our decaps going. We're going to keep the airborns with the bazooka squad in tandem. He can bleed me at range. He can kite me. I was trying to destroy the house. I was hoping that he was going to pop out. So that, that, that's pretty much the game right now. We are attempting to make pushes out of this. I go, okay, left side of the map is covered by MG42 and the flak. We can't do that. So what we're going to um, you know, get our focus going is we're going to push mid. There's a... Flak over here, this is going to kill our infantry, but I'm like, there's a weak point in the middle. We can exploit this and utilize this. We're going to take our Airborns and our AT gun, and we're going to try to get some max range shots into this. Should I have satcheled this house at this point in the game? Absolutely. I'm just being cautious because I just want to keep uh, munis for these guys right here. These P-47 rocket strikes, which will come in clutch later on. So, dude, if we do finally get a satchel going, I go, okay, let's just uh, fucking knock that out. We are going to barely hurt the building, and that's why I didn't want to go satchel. We are opening up in mid. Airborns are going to take the damage with the scouts in tandem. We want him focusing on these guys instead of this guy. So we do satchel the house. It barely does any damage whatsoever, so fuck me, right? But AT gun was within range, and luckily this thing doesn't shoot at infantry, so we can focus this and attempt to knock it out. Black Warble ones are trying to cover... And we're just putting as much pressure as we can. We do are about to destroy the gun. We just need one more volley. Boom. The gun is decrewed, but not fully destroyed. We need to get one more volley in with everything we got. Keeping the Shermans in support, covering the AT gun. We're going to keep our blob in the area. Because he's called in the planes, and the stupid order is so expensive. Well, I mean, not really. It's not really expensive. It, it's 180. I mean, this, this shit's way more expensive than uh, and more effective. Sorry, this shit's way more expensive and more effective than this shit right here. Inexpensive. Fuck, my tongue twister. Sorry. So, we kill the gun. That means that we've created a pocket in the middle of the map that we can kind of exploit. We're going to keep our AT gun on standby and keeping it well supported. But because of this pocket has been created, we can go ahead and focus our attention on the left side of the map. And that's exactly what we're going to do momentarily. Bazookas are going to back off. They're way too low. We don't want to get wiped. AT gun is still in support. So, in case he pushes like I'm expecting him to, we can fight him off. And because we created that exploit and he did uh, rotate the MG42, that allows us to get the cap on the VP, giving us more time, a little bit uh, of time to breathe, but we're you know pretty low on the VPs at this point in the game. The advantage is substantial, so any heavy mistake is a GG well played. Martyrs are popping up into the field. We're going to go ahead and rotate the AT gun. We are going to put rounds onto the Martyrs. He backs off. He knows what's up. The crowd shoots and is spotting for him. So the crowd shoots and at that range can spot this AT gun. So let's go ahead and show you real quick. This is his range. Our enemy has so, the advantage. I'm we sorry, Kitten Crad. My bad. Kitten Crad. He's going to move in his double AT gun because he's relying on this little spotter right here. He thinks that I am not well supported. We're going to go ahead and open up with the double Shermans and AT gun in support. We do win that engagement. Here comes the loader strength. I'm going to back off the infantry, keep the AT gun onto the field. He is pressing me as hard as he possibly can with these martyrs, but because the AT gun is still up and in support, we're going to go ahead and focus the uh, martyr with the double Shermans in tandem momentarily. Airborns are going to be on standby to recruit this gun once it gets knocked out. I do knock out the Martyr like I wanted it to, and I'm going to focus this other Martyr as well. Unfortunately, Shermans do miss on the first volley, and they're focusing the Black Verbal one, not like I told them to. That sucks. Now we have to prevent this AT gun from being recruited. He is suppressing me. He wants to pick it up. MG42 is in 10. We are in a bad situation. As soon as he picks up that AT gun, that means that he replaces his martyr with no pain whatsoever. I do lose the Sherman because the bazooka does get a lucky pin. Because bazookas are, you know, able to pin allied tanks, which is perfectly fine. Martyr is cranking out shots. That's a plus 10 range kicking in. We're moving the double bazookas out of base, though. 
We're gonna try to focus down that AT gun. I realize what he's doing. Once it's taken, it's pretty much a headache that's always gonna bother me. We are gonna recall on our AT gun that we lost though. Because we, we need the AT guns. At this point, I'm like, yeah, we need the AT. The Airborne's are going to get suppressed. I should have spaced them out. We do pop a smoke grenade with the Pathfinders, but it won't be enough. We are going to sit here and take it because of their health bonuses and their reduction uh, reduction in uh, cost with advanced Anybody logistics and survival team. training. We can sit here and take the damage, even in negative cover. And this is what exactly what I wanted. So we're healing up our Sherman. We did lose the Sherman. That's very unfortunate. AT gun is onto the field. We're just kind of taking our time here. You know, taking your time. This is going to be a bit of a slower side into the match. I will fast forward it when it gets uh, just a bit boring. Uh, I feel like this is boring. This game was just... Con it, it was... I would rather be typing an essay than playing this game. And I'm about to do that as soon as I get done with this uh, voice recording. Yeah, th this is not fun. This is not fun. This is not co adapting. This is not co, co competitive. This is fucking let's build as many fortifications as we can and chill in the back of the map. Here's the Black Warble one opening up on me. Airborne's do get suppressed because of the uh, white phosphorus ability. On the left side of the map, I am going to pop a smoke. Boom. Blocking the site, preventing me from getting pinned all the way. Because the MG42 is a pending machine, we are going to get the decap. We need to stop the bleeds. We're down to 169. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. On the VPs. And uh, we're again, we're just got to be very cautious. His units are vetted up. They are deadly. And I believe both of them, or one of them has the bazooka. He didn't take this other one. He's saving as much uh, munis as he can right now. The mines have backfired. I've swept them all. I didn't run into them. I didn't eat the mines like he expected me to. And next vehicle is going to be a Hellcat. I realize, hey, with Hellcat the Martyrs and uh, the AT guns harassing me, we need something a little enemy. bit more punchy as far as enemy. knocking out these uh, Flak Orval ones. And that's where we're at right now. So, because he's so heavily fortified on the left side of the map, I'm going to focus on the right side of the map. I did try to call on Recon Loiters to see what was going on. He's going to constantly shoot them down with this AA gun. We're going to move the AT gun with the tanks in support. Recon Loiter is activated. For some reason, he saw my AT gun at that max range. That can, kind of confused me a bit. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But because he opened up and he was focused on the recon plane, that allows me to get some very heavy damage into the flak. And that's what exactly what we're going for. And boom, flak gun knocked out, decrewed, but not fully killed. So we're going to move the airborne bazookas in to finish this little bastard off. And one more volley, and gone. So with that opened up, we've created a nice little pocket. We're slowly killing these fortifications. But because this man loves Minecraft, because this man loves the Sim City, he loves the Sims, he is going to replace every single gun that we killed. Look at that. Uh, that man wakes up every day and he digs a fucking trench to the kitchen. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. How's this fun? Is this fun? Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. Look at that. You kill one, two more take its place. Motherfucking Hydra. This man loves his Marvel movies. Hell Hydra. Zeke Hell, motherfucker. Holy shit. Whoo. Boy, I'm sweating. I'm sweating more than I sweat at the gym right now because this game, this is some fucking mental gymnastics right here. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Who, who said this is fun? Who, who at Company Hero Studio said that? Yeah, th this is okay. This is fun. This is co-adapting. Airborns are going to get opened up on. We're going to have to retreat them. I wanted the decap. We cannot afford to lose this unit. But because we have a little bit of the health buffs, I feel confident in the retreat. So what are we doing right now? All hands on deck. We're just going to go ahead and rush it. We're going to use the dual P-47 rocket strike to harass this guy right here. Hopefully trying to get a wipe onto the unit. We do wipe the AT gun, which means my tanks can move in. I think I get a bit of damage in that Flak 38. We do, uh, you know, suppress these units with that volley, I believe. I'm, I'm a little bit lost here. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, never mind. We're going to go ahead and attempt to knock out the gun. Sorry, I was focused the MG42. I was all over the place. But we do kill the AT gun, which means that he cannot use my AT gun against me. We're going to take the Airborns and push. I feel confident in that. We have the Hellcat on standby. We have the AT gun. I get a lucky uh, shot through this little uh, hole right here in the wall onto the Martyr. We are going to rotate these guys. What are we doing right now? We're being cautious because this Flak 38 in combo with the Flak... I'm sorry. Flak 36 with the Flak 38 with the Flak Panzer Warble win. That's a lot of Flaks are all working together. They are all slobbing those knobs. So AT Gun is opening up. We're at max range. Sherman is moving in. We're going to go ahead and get a dirty satchel on this guy. As soon as we knock out the fucking gun, we can go ahead and focus on the flak with the Sherman and AT Gun. And boom, satchel pops. His units are moving in. We have to reposition the AT Gun because he's moving to counter satchel us or wipe it himself. 
His tank is moving in. Hellcat is on standby. Where is this little bastard? I didn't move him in like I was supposed to. But boom, Hellcat is moving in now. We are going to knock out the uh, Martyr. I'm going to get an attack round shot. One second. Attack round incoming. And boom, lucky attack round. We're trying to roll out as much as we can. The bazooka is penetrating me heavily, so this is very risky. He is moving in again, uh, in again with the AT gun. I should have scooted up the MG. I will do that momentarily. It is within range, though. That's what I was thinking. It's within enough range that if he does touch it, we can wipe it. He does pick up the gun. One more shot from the Sherman should correct that, though. And 30 cal is opening up like I wanted it to. But honestly, if he had gotten lucky, I should have scooted this up because if he could have took in this gun, so... It was a little bit of a risky gamble. It does pay off. He is coming in with a strafing run. We're just going to go ahead and uh, reposition. We're not going to retreat. We're going to attempt to reposition. It does give me a heavy damage burst, but hey, not the end of the world. MG42 is setting up. I go, fuck it. I have enough blob. I feel confident. We're going to go ahead and wipe this gun at max range, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm not going to space anything out. I'm not going to... I just said, fuck it. We're killing the gun. I'm tired of playing this little mind games with you. I'm tired of playing Company Heroes 3. Fuck using anything tactical, because right now, old boy is going to make two MGs to replace the MG that's just lost. The MG42 behind the MG42 for the glorious fatherland. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Zeke, 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 Zeke. Hey, hey, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've been playing some Company Heroes 2. The Wearaboos are in full force right now. The amount of Wearaboo profiles that say Zeke something, uh, Panzerkampfwagen, the 42nd Grenadier. I, I, I want you Wearaboo players to know that Germany lost World War II. Russia rolled up on fucking Berlin and slayed them bitches. They did some fucked up shit to the civilian population. Germany lost World War II. Oh my goodness. Uh, here's over here on the left side of the map. Let's try to recruit the guns and repair them. And I'm gonna go ahead and call on a loader strike. We're gonna get some finishing damage onto the emplacement. He does shoot the planes down with the flak uh, emplacement. That's crazy. And those are rapid rockets, by the way. So he knocks down my plane, but we get the finishing blow onto the anti-tank gun emplacement, allowing, again, another little pocket to exploit, to open up. We're going to put the MG and the Airborns on the back of the map. We're trying to cover as much as possible. Oh, man, it, it, it's 36 minutes in. I, I'm having fun. Are you having fun? It's so much fun. I'm, it's so much fun right now. I'm checking my phone for messages. Oh, yep, I'm, I'm having fun. This game's so much fun, guys. Whoo! And we're gonna go ahead and repair all of our units. Every single one of our units are getting repaired right now. Uh, we're gonna open up on the MG. I feel confident in winning this engagement because I'm well supported. The uh, Falsham Pioneers are moving in, and I go, yep, it's just trying to move. No unnecessary model drops. Uh, because the Falsham Pioneers are coming in, and both MGs are pretty much suppressed. I'm sorry. These guys and this guy is suppressed. I'm just going to back off. The grenade launcher can bleed me heavily and the mortar and support. It can pop flares. I just don't want to deal with it. MG42 on the left side of the map. We're going to go ahead and pop a smoke grenade. Yeah, being a dickhead and denying that sight. Hellcat's fully repaired. I'm going to go ahead and just scoot it up a little bit. Here comes the strafing run. He's getting nervous about the DP bleed. He wants to bleed me as much as possible and just knock me out of the game. Flak Warbowin is onto the field. We're going to have to go ahead and back off. Hellcat is moving in support. Airborns are ready to go. Like I said, I, I just don't even care anymore. Let's just get the blob going. I, I, I just don't care. I just don't care. It's not even fun. If, if all you got to do is sit behind the fucking map and do this. So Hellcat's going to go around the mountain. We're going to put some flanking shots into the gun. Take it off uh, anti-tank. Uh, sorry. We're going to focus it. <sighs> I'm stuttering. I'm sorry. We're just going to kill this fucking thing. And boom. Knock it out. Airborne's are in reserve. I'm making sure this flak horrible one doesn't uh, loop around or martyrs or anything like that. We don't want any unnecessary bleeding. MG42 is opening up on me. Airborne's do get suppressed. We will kill the gun momentarily. I'm moving in the Airborne's on the high ground to knock out this gun. We're being cautious though. AT gun that he's stolen for the second time is in support. So I'm going, okay, let's just move the Sherman back. We're out of range of this guy right here. There could be a flak replacement over there. Uh, we get a lucky shot into the AT gun. I'm going to call on rockets again. We are going to knock out the Flak 38. This is a big win right here. And we're just opening up as much as we can with these uh, airborne onto the position. Because they can take a lot more damage and because one of these models only shoot a bazooka, we're going to use the sight blocker right here from the MG42 and use the high ground advantage to put pressure onto the Flak 36 anti-tank cannon. And we're so close to knocking it out, I can taste it. You know, it's just fucking sitting there, menacingly, Oh, And we're so close. We're holding on for dear life, butt cheeks to clinching. We need one more rocket, one more for the fatherland, and we feel confident with the Hellcat. We're going to go ahead and move in. He is trying to recruit. 
as fast as he can and he does get the recruit unfortunately but hellcat needs one more shot into the gun and boom knocked out we are going to roll out like nobody's business middle of the map he does overextend with the martyr sherman does get the kill this is a big win my man's only got two anti-tank guns three mg42s two falchion pioneers and a lot of zeke hail left to his name right now but let's go ahead and check that map maybe he'll put another emplacement down i don't know we'll see in a second but finally, after 39 minutes, we've killed all the emplacements. We have done everything we could to get rid of this fucking cancer. I've, i we're on leukemia right now, and we're we're getting back to we're getting back to stage two. But we were stage three cancer for a minute, people. But we're doing it. We're slowly slaying it. We're opening up the game again. I call in a recon plane because I go, hey, guess what? You have no more fucking anti-air. Get fucked. So it's my turn to watch you. I also killed the crab shoots and I don't remember doing that. Uh, might have been over here. But that's okay. Sherman's gonna take the high ground. I go, you know what? If I can't capture the fuel, fuck you. You're not gonna get the fuel either. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and focus the munis. I've been relying heavily on these uh, dual P-47 rocket strikes and we need them. So, with uh, no AA into the field, we're gonna use everything we can just to recon. My opponent is gonna make a third AT gun. I didn't realize that. I thought he was gonna go into maybe Jaegers. Uh, or make another martyr, but he's changing his army composition again. He's going from Sim City to defensive doctrine. <gasps> uh, defensive uh, cheese. Uh, yeah, because of the three MG42s, it's pretty fucking cheesy on this uh, side of the town. Bingo fuel in. So, uh, it, it, we're, we're calming down right now. I realize, hey, we're finally stabilizing. We are doing good on the manpower float. These upgrades, as risky as they were in the early game, are paying off in the late game. We're floating significantly on the fuel. So is my opponent. But Floss, the Axis main say anything. You see, this is the problem. How could you, de how could you destroy the glorious fortifications? It's crazy. AT guns are opening up on me. Because of that amount of AT gun, I think I'm going to lose a Sherman. Boom. Oh, actually, I double bounce. That was lucky as fuck. So we get to keep the Sherman. I did pop the keep them firing, increases the burst length and uh, reduces speed. Helps the crew get a little bit of wipes. We're going to go ahead and move our blob and take the high ground. What are we doing right now? We're going to go ahead and dodge the strafe. We are also looking for potential satchels. He is floating the vampire point. He is going to throw a satchel. I'm like, okay. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice the pathfinders. I'm okay with this. I'm like, yeah, I hit the retreat button. I realize they're going to die. I need the manpower. At this. I'm sorry, I need the population cap. So with the Pathfinder's dead and that unit off the field had served its purpose, I go, okay. And that, that's not an exaggeration. I quickly realized it was going to die and I used that to my advantage. I'm like, yeah, let's just go ahead and wipe them. I, I really don't need them anymore. So with the plus um, five opened up, I'm debating on maybe getting another airborne squad um, if I get low enough or just pumping out an additional Sherman but we'll see in a second so I do wipe the AT gun I don't want to capture it I'm going to focus the Zooks on it uh, and when I realize that I can't kill it I'm going to throw a satchel I believe we'll see in a second nope never mind I do kill it with the bazooka so we're good so, he has limited AT guns, uh, his guns are over here, I killed one, there's two over there, I'm gonna focus the MG42, get some heavy uh, damaging bleeds into it. Boom, boom, double hit from the guns, we do wipe it, I don't want to pick it up. At this point in the game, we have uh, three MGs ourselves, two being 1919s, one being a glorious MG42 for the Fatherland, yeah! So, we don't really need it. Grenade out from me, I'm trying to just decrease this MG42. And I'm just dodging it constantly. We might get the wipe on it. I've been dodging it for a minute. It's going to be very close. Uh, because these Airborns are veterans, the three, they're going to do really good. I do get a dirty satchel down. That is going to wipe the mortar and the uh, anti-tank gun in combo. So this is working out in our favor right here, folks. We knocked out the mortar and we killed the anti-tank gun. The only thing he can do is recruit that shit. So this match is falling into our favor. We're, we've passed the climax. We're slowly, gradually leaning down. We're getting control of this map again. He still has time to bleed, though, if he really wants to. He has time. He won't, though. They never do. But he has time. Plenty of time. Enough manpower. Well, I mean, we're doing great on manpower, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we're doing great. I risked it for the biscuit and it paid off. Uh, Anti-tanks guns are gonna open up. Sherman's gotta back out. We're leaving the M1919 to cover the VP point. We're going to push on the right side of the map, get the VP control going. 
But uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're hitting that point where we can chill. He, he needs one more glorious Steiner's counterattack to take this game back, people. One more glorious Steiner counter attack, yeah. We're just gonna blob the Airborns together. Like I said, I just don't fucking care anymore. I a After this match, I don't know, man. I've just kind of hit that. I've hit co-equilibrium. I just don't even care. Airborns are going to open up. We are going to get suppressed. Recon is going because he doesn't have anti-air um, anymore. I've killed it all. And we're looking for a glorious push to end this game. So that's what we're doing. I I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it. Because uh, that's pretty much this match right now. So AT guns are set up. Boom, 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 boom. Let's just save you guys some time. AT guns are going to roll on the map. Shermans are moving in. Tactical pause. Let's speed this up. 46 minutes of pain. L let's not waste your guys' time. Airborns are suppressed, MG42s everywhere, glory to the fatherland, and that's pretty much the match, people. I'll, I'll speed it up for you. The, the, the match is over, he can't push anymore. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and try to rotate to the right side of the map. Shermans are gonna go ahead and kick in. One more glorious Steiner counterattack. We knock out and decrew two AT guns. And left side of the map, he does try to knock out my MG. He goes for a cheeky para drop squad. I'm gonna go ahead and buff this unit with a 50 cal. Move the low health Sherman because he can't rotate his entire army with his AT gun. See, he's trying to move everything he's got to kill the Sherman. I'm like, by the time you get here, I'm gonna fucking punch your face in. So, that's why we're being cautious. And, def I'm sorry, that was defeat for the Axis player because I was witnessing him. Victory for me. So, uh, that's it. Look at the KD ratio before somebody says, uh, allies OP. He had way more kills to me. I had a shit ton of vehicle kills though. <laughs> I made them bitches work, and it's because the emplacements counts with vehicles, so before somebody says something. Uh, that, that's Company of Heroes 3, people. It's, it's a game. It's a game. It is most certainly a game. My boy, uh, top 100 player. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what you... None of this looks fun. If you think that I had a good time playing this, uh, it was very, very, very boring. I'm going to go study history now. Later.